two types of acceleration, uh, one called centripetal acceleration, which is an acceleration you get anytime something is turning, and tangential acceleration, which is what you have when something is either speeding up or slowing down. So to keep things simple, we'll start with just moving at constant speed in a circle. Um, so let's say we have an object that's here, and we'll say that it's moving this way at constant speed. Um, well, what we can do is locate this object with what's called a position vector. So what we're going to do is have the origin at the center of the circle, and then this is a vector that just locates the object. right? So that vector is tipped up from what we would say in math class call the x-axis, the horizontal, um, by some angle that's called theta. And so what we're going to do is just give the x and y coordinates of this object so that we're giving its, well, its position. Well, so the x coordinate would be the radius of the circle times the cosine of the angle. I know it's cosine because this red segment here would be adjacent to the known angle. And the y coordinate would be our sine theta. And the reason I know it's sine is that it is opposite to the known angle. And so the x coordinate would be radius of the circle cosine theta, and the y coordinate would be radius of the circle sine theta. Then, of course, the magnitude of this vector would just be the radius of the circle. Um, you can see that not only just by looking at it, but also by, say, Pythagorean theorem. If you do square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, well, cosine squared plus sine squared is just 1. And so the uh, magnitude of this vector is just the radius of the circle. Well, what we want to do is have this thing actually moving at constant speed. And if that's the case, the angle is going to just increase linear, in linearly with time. So instead of distance is rate times time, it would be like angular distance or angle is, uh, well, angular rate or angular speed times the time. So we'll just have it increase like uh, omega t. So all we're going to do is make the angle time dependent and just call the angle omega t if it's going to rotate at constant speed. Well, what we can do now to find the velocity is take this position vector r and take its time derivative. Um, so those of you in, uh, well, calc AB are probably just learning this. Um, but what you want to do then is just take the um, time derivative of both the x component and the y component. Well, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So you notice the cosine has changed to a sine with a negative sine in front here. And then you see we have this extra factor of omega um, from what's called chain rule. Um, and so the argument of the cosine function has this omega t inside. And so not only do you take the derivative of the outer function, uh, derivative of cosine being negative sine, but also the derivative of the inner function, which is just omega t. Um, so that's where that extra omega comes from. And likewise with the, um, the y component, derivative of sine is cosine. And then you get this extra omega that comes out in front from what's called chain rule. So there's our velocity vector. Now something you notice or could notice right away is that this velocity vector, if you take what's called the dot product, which if you've learned a little bit about vectors, you multiply the x components together and add them to the y components multiplied together, um, you would see that those two vectors happen to be perpendicular to each other. Um, so the dot product of v and r um, is zero. And so what that actually means is we could redraw the velocity of this um, thing as being perpendicular to the position vector. Um, which most of you probably knew that from common sense. If something's going around in a circle, then the velocity is just along the circle or tangent to the circle. Um, and so there's our velocity vector. Um, and then the other thing we can see from the velocity vector is if you take its magnitude, um, the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, um, you'll get that the velocity is just uh, r omega, just the, um, the radius times the what's called the angular velocity. Um, so that's all about the velocity vector. Well, if we take the time derivative of the velocity vector um, of this vector here, we will get the acceleration. Well, so let's do it. The derivative of sine is cosine. Um, and then we get this extra factor of omega that pops in the front. So instead of there being an omega in the front, now there's an omega squared in the front. Um, and then likewise, derivative of cosine is negative sine, so the cosine has become a negative sine. And then we also get another factor of omega in the front. Well, what you notice here is that this acceleration vector, um, it has r cosine omega t in the x component and r sine omega t in the y component. 
just like the position vector did. The only difference is both components are multiplied by minus omega squared. So this is key, okay? The acceleration vector, it is the same as the position vector, except with a negative sign in front and it's got a different uh, magnitude. So it's got a negative constant in the front, okay? Well, what that means then is the acceleration vector is, well, just like the position vector, only it's a different length and it points the opposite way. So it points toward the center. So we see that when something is moving constant speed in a circle, the acceleration vector points toward the center of the circle, right? Um, so that's take home point number one about uh, acceleration vector when something is going in a circle. Uh, take home point number two is that we can use the Pythagorean theorem um, to find the magnitude of this acceleration vector. Again, square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. And what you would get is that the magnitude of the acceleration vector then is just omega squared r. Now we've already shown that v is r omega. So if you put in omega is v over r in here, what you learn is, well, kind of a useful relationship is that the form, the form a formula for the size of the acceleration that you get when something's going constant speed in a circle is v squared over r, where r is just the radius of the circle. Um, so this thing is a big deal. So two big things about acceleration um, of an object that's going constant speed in a circle. Um, the acceleration is toward the center and the size of that acceleration is v squared over r. Well, so now to look at cases where there are two types of acceleration. Um, in this example, it says an object's moving in a direction shown, but slowing down. What is the direction of the total acceleration at point P? Well, as we just saw, when something is turning, there is an acceleration toward the center of that turn. We just saw this. Um, and so that's what's called the centripetal acceleration. It's the acceleration that's due to turning. And it's gonna point this way. Um, and it's gonna have this magnitude v squared over r that we just derived. Um, now, what is the r here? Because it's not really going in a circle. Um, the r would be the radius of curvature, say, at that point in the turn, all right? Um, if the object were drawn over here, it would have a smaller radius of curvature. It's a tighter turn. Um, but here where we've drawn it, it would have, you know, I'm kind of guesstimating that the, the radius of curvature would kind of look like this. Um, so here is the direction of the acceleration just due to the sort of right turn that this thing is making at the moment. Um, but we also see that this thing is slowing down. So what that means is there's a component of acceleration that's against the direction of motion or back this way. Um, we call that the tangential acceleration, and that's just acceleration due to, well, changing speed, and in this case, slowing down, so it points back. If this object were speeding up, that tangential thing would be pointing the other way. Um, and so to get the size of the tangential acceleration, it's just the, it's just the change in speed with time is the magnitude of the tangential acceleration. And so you have these two components of acceleration, one due to turning, one due to changing speed. And then if you want the grand total acceleration, the net acceleration, um, you just need to take the vector sum of those two uh, components of acceleration. Um, and so that will give you the, in general, the acceleration of an object that's say both uh, turning and then either speeding up or slowing down.